the story of I start with coffee. It's really good to work with uh, not only a good producer of coffee, but people that we know personally. I met Sam before Bellwoods was even uh, a thought. I've been going to the original Harbour shop since probably two or three weeks after it opened, 13 years ago. The Bellwoods Brewery opened here at 124 Ossington back in 2012. Uh, Mike Clark and I are the two owners of the company and we both uh, shared a vision for what we wanted to do as far as a brewery goes in Toronto. And yeah, Sam's uh, uh, Harvard Cafe is meaningful to me because it was the, the best espresso bar that opened around the corner from my house. I, um, I met John just before that, taught him the home brew in, our, in my basement. We, we all admired it back then, it was obviously the coolest espresso bar around. I'm extremely excited about the Bellwoods collaboration, the start with coffee with our butter knife. It's, um, it's the one I'm actually excited about the most when we do it, because we've done a bunch of different batches with single origin coffees, um, just to kind of highlight an expression of what that origin characteristic is. But butter knife is, its characteristic is the, like, the ethos of Sam James Coffee Bar. And like, I feel like, Butter knife represents what we are about. Like it's accessible, it's sweet, it's balanced, it's repeatable, it's predictable, it's something you can trust. When it comes to roasting butter knife, uh, you know, same as almost every other bean. It's green to brown. You put it in green, it comes out brown. It's not that complicated, and at the same point, it's very complicated. The the process in between that to make sure that it's, you know, it's got. Uh, caramelization and it's sugary instead of uh, those bitter flavors. Um, that's where the, the finesse and the technique kind of comes into play because uh, anyone can throw coffee into a roaster and turn it from green to brown but to do it properly is a, is a whole different beast. For the first one or maybe the first few versions of a set with coffee we went with Sam James and then we decided okay let's try other coffee roasters to kind of keep uh, our customers interested in like trying new ones uh, then Sam opened up a shop across the street around that same time and it was like this is a no-brainer we should just stick with the relationship we started with and now that's going into the LCBO it was just like obvious that we should choose Sam's coffee. Uh, I manage all of the LCBO and grocery stores in Ontario from Windsor all the way to Thunder Bay it's always exciting to bring a new product into the LCBO especially if it's brand new People who don't have access to uh, Bellwoods or Sam James, um, it's easier for them to grab it off the shelves instead of coming all the way here. Prior to the uh, LCBO um, batches, it was all done here and we would just sell it out of our retail store, out of the retail store at the other location and Sam would often pick up a few cases just to sell across the street. So it was very limited runs. like. They would last for about a week and a half before it would sell out and people would ask when's the next South Coffee because it's popular enough that we can send it up to the production facility. That with Coffee has been a part of Bellwoods for quite a while. One of the styles that goes back to first generation kind of early 90s dad breweries type of thing. And I find beer and coffee not even necessarily stout with coffee. I've tried some good IPAs with coffee and stuff too. Coffee is just such a nice flavor and you have, it's the same kind of process to roasting beans as roasting malt. Um, so in that aspect that it just kind of makes sense to combine those flavors together to me. And you get you can get very coffee-like roasty flavors from malt to begin with, and to actually add coffee beans just accentuates that even more, I find. And it's the only light stout that we do. Um, so like, we don't do like a 5% regular stout, we do the stout with coffee, which is very approachable, not astringent. Uh, we don't have the coffee in the hot side, which is why you get a lot of the flavor and not the astringency. Uh, we had it when it was cold, like just cold steep it on the beer itself. Uh, but I've been at so many breweries and a lot of breweries have coffee stouts just because those flavors is just like peaches and cream. They just go well together. Stout with coffee goes back quite some time. Yeah. And it's for a reason and it sticks around. It's good. We designed a stout with coffee initially as a, a it still is, but a sessionable, light, lighter drinking beer with good body not overwhelming, 
um, the, kind, the kind of stout that you can have a pint of and enjoy w with food or not. For us to brew it, the idea was to make a, a relatively low alcohol, it's like 5% alcohol, uh, stout with still a lot of body, so it's got a fair amount of residual sugar in it. So the idea is that the, uh, the beer is soaked, the, the coffee beans are soaked in the beer when it's at zero degrees and then just load it with um, coffee beans, like a pretty high uh, rate of coffee beans. The stout base itself has a lot of like roasty chocolatey flavor, so that's kind of covered. Sam's coffee works out really well because we could get like really fruity coffees, but often they'd be quite like acidic coffees, and that in that style of beer, what we want. Uh, and the beans that we were using from Sam have like a solid base, but with like fruity notes on top, which ended up working really, really well. Whenever we're looking for a new Brazil, it's got to be, it's got to have those like peanut and chocolatey flavors. You make it a blend by having uh, like a Colombia or a Guatemala. And then the, the jelly aspect usually comes from uh, the Guatemala or Colombia that we've selected. And when you pair those together, yeah, you get the, the PB and J. Doing a beer that's going to be in the LCBO with a reputable brewer like Bellwoods that showcases the thing that I think we're most about, to me, that is the most exciting part of this. It's also the one that you guys have all the time. Like, oh, I had a, a beer with this and it's available here as well. And for us, if we're consistently brewing the same product for four or five months at a time, we would want something that Sam has readily available. Yeah, the genesis of the idea for Butter Knife is this approach where we believe that the customer is not done. You know, the people who drink coffee know what they like in coffee. They don't need to be shepherded into a whole new world. They need just a better version of what they already love. And Butter Knife, takes a product that people are already familiar with, a very simple, um, rich, sweet, heavy body, like heavy flavored coffee, uh, and just applies more technique in roasting, um, more precision in sourcing, more care in storing to make sure that the, the version of, of what we're giving people is just an elevated version of what they're already expecting and used to. And that's, for me, like, I think that is what every coffee company needs to have as the, like, the base of what they do. It is my go-to coffee shop, especially when I'm at Ossington. I love it. It is delicious. I'm enjoying one right now. If it is not in your local LCBO, you can also you can always request it from the store. Sam's been established for over a decade. We've been established for a decade now, and it's just, we're in the same neighborhood. We've been drinking it for 13 years and across the street and there's like that, uh, it's a community thing.